you'll probably all be aware there's some very small CB radios that have come on the market recently. And um, today we've got Mark, my friend, another engineer here, and we thought we're going to do a um, service feature on the CRT1, and this is the same as the other three that we've spotted of these probably similar chassis sets. Uh, the, there's a small owl brick, there's a small team, and the Anytone what, Mark? Smart. The Anytone Smart, thank you. So it just coincides, it's one of our customers asked us to supply a CRT1. I had already bought a CRT1 in to do this evaluation on, and so we'll kind of do two at the same time, and then I'll send Mark out on an air test, and I'll get him to put one of the CRTs in his car, and drive a number of miles away and then we'll have the other one here so it'll actually be the the two-way communication will be between two identical sets so to that end there are two CRT ones but we'll start by dismantling our one rather than the customers so what do we find I think Mark's already been in this box <laughs> he smiles and there is one of these dinky little radios Absolutely with a permanently wired in mic which I'm not surprised all metal construction what else is in this box I think we've had the destruction book out usual bracket and mic clip and things like that so I'll put that to one side We'll have to zoom in on this, it's so small. No, I can't have the camera in the normal position. You've probably seen others of these, and the button configuration seems to differ, but I presume they're the same chassis. That's sometimes something we'll find out. We have bought in the Albrecht one, we have bought in the Team one. I'm convinced we've bought in the any tome smart. smart, but I've mislaid it. I've probably ended up putting it in my 8 track cartridge player because it's the same kind of size. What's an 8 track cartridge, you'll say? Right, what we're going to do is take the screws out and see what we're greeted with. So we've unboxed it and connected it up to power. I've made a little diagram, there's only three adjustments in it, and those three adjustments. We've got one there, one there, and one there. Well, one's going to be deviation for FM, one's probably going to be modulation for AM, and perhaps the other one's going to be, if it's got an S meter or something like that, I don't know. Perhaps it's going to be frequency trim. There are no adjustable coils, and uh, there we go. So, uh, what have we noticed? Well, I, I thought I'd get the uh, little six inch steel rule out, and you'll notice it's 10 centimetres or 4 inches across. So it's very dinky indeed. The mic that it comes with is a up-down mic, so it's not as basic as you might fear. Now, is that a speaker mic, do we think? We'll switch it on and find out. Mm. And you've got to go into a second function for Squelch. That's messed it up. This is powered up in UK mode. Uh, presumably Mark's played with it uh, previously. I look at Mark. He nods. Right. I'm going to go... So we've connected up the test set to the antenna socket. We've got the radio now switched on. And it says, if we get that the right way on, FM8. Well, we want it on channel 20 for these tests and what I don't know is are we on UK FM or not so we'll find out so going into transmit yes I've got it on UK and it's showing 2779083, so it's slightly low on frequency. We'll 
just did not notice a deliberate error here. The power supply was on current limit, uh, set to one amp. The set is drawing on transmit 1.48 amps, and it is giving exactly three watts right at this moment. So I need to, and the frequency is spot on. Before, when it was on current limit, it was uh, a bit low, but now the power supply is set up properly. It's spot on. Should be 2779125, and it's 2779126 toggling seven. So that's spot on. Right. So we've got to find out what these three adjustments are without a service manual. So I'm going to um, do some injecting of signals to find out because what I don't want to do is to mess about with them and upset them. So staying in the transmit mode. Just zoom in a fraction. And I've shown you the steel rule. Now the first preset which we've determined what it does is this one on the left between the ceramic receive crystal and the um, and the crystal filter is the deviation. So I'll just put our little tone generator on. And as it's come out of the box, it's 1.4 kilohertz. Well, what we need is between 2.2 and 2.5. So I'm going to adjust that. And then just check with the whistle test. <whistles> so we've now got 2.2 kilohertz by using the deviation. Otherwise, it does sound so quiet and people will go we whispering. And the second preset we've discovered, when we're going to transmit, the radio is just doing over 3 watts as it's come out of the box. Um, so what we're just going to do is to set the power and the second control down, the, the one which is the lower one of the two there, is in fact the power. So, I'm just knock that up to... Four watts, which is what we're now at. I presume that the preset above, and I may be wrong, somebody may know better than I do, somebody with a service manual, I would presume the one above is going to be AM modulation, but seeing as we're in the UK, that uh, really isn't very relevant. I know we can now use AM on the CPT band, but that isn't going to interest either myself or any of the customers uh, that we have here who are only interested in the CB2781 UK band. So that's all there is to it on transmit. So it's a basic set. We're going to transmit. It just says TX. We're on the channel. There's no relative RF meter on that. What more can you say? Um, it certainly does the 4 watts and it does the correct deviation and it's well made. So we'll stop the video and... We'll see you on the receive side of this video.